Hi, this is Jeff Blauett, Technical Agronomist for Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And we're out in the cornfield today. Uh, it's mid-September now. Uh, we've got a lot of silage flying as we talked last week. That continues. But we usually get to this time of year, a lot of the talk around the corn is how far along is it? You know, what type of moisture are we getting in the silage? How far are we from maturity? And a lot of that talk revolves around that corn's milk layer or that starch layer of that uh, kernel. So I thought we'd kind of look at that and then kind of explain a little bit about what that maybe means and some time frames that are around that. Basically, you know, we talk about uh, corn's life cycle, that reproductive part of that corn's life. When it pollinates, from the time it pollinates to the time we have a physiologically mature or a kernel that's done accumulating dry matter, it's roughly 60 to 65 days, so about two months. So from the time we pollinate to the time we have that first you know, hard starch layer forming in that kernel or when it starts to dent, that's about the first month. So we've got about 30 days or so in that time frame. Once we get beyond denting, we start looking at when that milk line starts to progress down the kernel. And from the time that dent starts to the time we have a kernel with what we call a black layer, that abscission layer when that dry matter flow is done from the cob into that kernel. And that's complete, that's about another month. So you're looking at somewhere in that 60 to 65 days uh, time frame. So I think what's interesting is, you know, how that all happens and how that allows us to down the road predict roughly when the corn's going to be a certain moisture or when we're going to be mature so we can start to sequence combining a little bit. Of course, Mother Nature is a factor in that. Uh, Mother Nature never reads the book. The book sometimes leads us astray. We get into hot, dry weather and stress and all these things that can go on with the plant, nutrient deficiency and so on that can speed along because there isn't enough for that plant's ability to feed what it needs. It shouldn't be so much the case this year, so I think we can have a fairly decent chance of it being close to what the book says. Of course, frost and early frost before it gets that far can play into it and diseases and, and certain things like that, but we'll just talk in general terms today on the average acre of corn. Um, so from a stage perspective, R5 corn is when that dent forms. Uh, R5 and a quarter is a quarter milk line, R5 and a half is a half milk line, and so on. So as that corn starts to create that milk line, that dry matter accumulation starts at the outer edge of that kernel and progresses down towards the tip, um, I thought we'd talk about a, a reference of timing. Um, first thing is, you know, we talk about a black layer, or a, a milk line, I should say, and if we wanted to talk about that and how to find that, you know, you take an ear, uh, you break it open, and we kind of look at where it's at. There's lots of different ways. You can look at the kernel, uh, not the side of the kernel with the germ on it, but the other side where there is, it's just kind of a progression from orange to a light yellow uh, on the kernel. And I like to just, in the field, I like to just take my, my teeth and kind of bite it. bite down to that kernel to where it's hard. You can kind of see, you know, how far I got. And this one's probably a good half milk line. Um, you can also take that kernel and run your pen down that to wherever your pen sinks in and then make a line. You know, that's kind of that, you know, half or a little bit over that if we, you know, look at it. So this is probably a half to two-thirds milk line um, ear that we've got. Uh, this is some early corn planted at a fairly decent time. Um, we've got some other ears here. If we look at this one, um, we can kind of see that this has got a milk line that's not quite as far along. So let's just say this is maybe a half milk line and this one maybe being three-quarters. So what does that mean? If we're half milk line today, and you know, let's say today is the 15th of September, so a half milk line today, we're gonna spend probably another at least three weeks to where we have a kernel that's finished or black layer. So what does that mean from a moisture perspective? A uh, half milk line kernel is somewhere in the neighborhood of 40% moisture. So 
obviously it's still got a lot of work to do to, to put more dry matter and more accumulation into that kernel. Uh, we get down to three-quarter milk line, we're down to 37% moisture. Once corn gets to black layer where it's done putting dry matter into that kernel, it's kind of an estimate of somewhere in that 30 to 35, probably close to 35% moisture kernel. Um, and then from there it dries down. So let's say that this corn is probably just short of three-quarter milk line. We've still got at least another two weeks before this one is black layered. So that puts us at the end of September. And we're gonna use the whole month of October hopefully to dry that corn down and, and we'll need that. The warmer months are starting to get away from us. We need heat to dry that corn. But if we look at something like we had in these other years that are planted a little bit later, 105 day corn, and we've obviously got even later stuff than that out in the country or later planting dates. Um, some of that stuff is basically just barely half milk line we're gonna need at least three weeks, three and a half weeks for that stuff to get to black layer. Well, that being the case, and we're starting to get into October and we're losing those days, we really want those heat, uh, heat units for dry down. Obviously, if we get a lot of hot weather yet in this last half of September, that speeds the process up probably a little bit, but if we get some cool weather, uh, some dampness, it's probably gonna take a little longer. And we're really gonna have a, a potential this year for what I would consider some uh, more moisture in the corn and obviously with the grain prices the way they are we really don't want to spend a lot drying it but we may have some of that this year uh, pending the weather of course but it's not going to be 16 percent coming out of the field all over the place um, that's we just know that's not going to happen so just thought we'd touch base on where that crop is today what to maybe expect um, some of the things that got planted in April are going to be much further along obviously this year. They're going to have more time to have accumulated heat units. But we also had a lot of corn get planted that 10th to 15th to even the 20th of May. And some of that stuff's going to be a little while yet. So you can go out and look in your field. Every hybrid is going to be a potentially a little different. Go out and chomp on some kernels. See where it's at. Estimate your uh, your dry matter accumulation and what your milk line is doing and it'll give you somewhat of an idea where you'll be for moisture uh, and how long it's going to take to be done. So with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment and we'll see you next week.